So really quickly, I'm just going to go through why we pre-oxygenate our patients before we give them a general anaesthetic. So what we're going to do is we're taking our patient, we've lined them, laying them down flat on a bed, and we're going to render them unconscious, and usually we take away their ability to breathe as well. So what's going to happen, their lungs are going to collapse down, and there's going to be a little bit of volume left in those lungs. And the oxygen in that volume is going to be used up by the blood, sent to the tissues, and then once that oxygen is used up, the body is going to start to desaturate and their oxygen levels are going to drop. So what we can do is fill that volume up with oxygen as much as possible, and that's going to buy us time to get our airway in and our ventilation established. And the more time you can buy, the better. So usually what we do is at least three to five minutes of breathing 100% pure oxygen, just tidal volume breathing, comfortable breathing, while you get all your equipment ready. The alternative is you can achieve the same effect in three to four full, all the way in, all the way out, what we call vital capacity breaths. And then there are other techniques such as Thrive, uh, which is high flow nasal oxygen, but those are a bit more specialist. In general, we get people to just breathe pure oxygen for a few minutes and it fills their lungs up with oxygen. And the thing we are focusing on is their safe apnea time, which means how long they can safely not breathe without their oxygen levels dropping dangerously low. So dangerously low, we take 90% as our lower tolerance. So how long does it take for their oxygen saturations to drop from 100% down to 90%? The reason we use 90% is because this is the point on the dissociation curve, your oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, at which point if you start to drop any lower, it really drops very quickly and you're into dangerous territory. So if we have someone who is just breathing room air, they will classically desaturate within 30 seconds to one minute. However, if we filled their lungs up with 100% oxygen, we have a lot longer. And to give you an idea of how much longer, let's say we've got a patient consuming oxygen at 250 mils a minute, that's sort of normal for a 70 kilo person, and that their functional residual capacity, so that resting volume when they've exhaled and haven't taken another breath in, is about 2,100 mils. If you have got enough oxygen in their lungs that they are now breathing out, 90% oxygen, you have got seven and a half minutes to faff around with the airway before their sats are going to drop dangerously low. And that's why we take the time to pre-oxygenate effectively.